Good morning, folks. Welcome to Church of Christ Uniting. Welcome to Trinity Sunday today. We're glad you're here. Uh, we welcome all who are listening online as well as all who are in person here today. And uh, if uh, you take a look uh, in the bulletin, you should see a flyer for Vacation Bible School. Um, that's happening this week down at First Pres. The 14th, 15th, and 16th from 6 to 8. And uh, the, all the details are there. And I hope some of you, uh, your grandchildren, your nieces, nephews, neighbors, share the word, pass it around. Hopefully some will be able to come and enjoy uh, some of the events at First Press. Uh, we have been invited to be there, and we hope some of our kids will be able to be there. So check that out. Um, also, there are lots of announcements in here. Um, please remember to pray for folks on page three for the prayer concerns. Today at four o'clock, Parish Life is sponsoring a covered dish supper with that sight and sound movie, Jonah. And this is on DVD, so there's no issues with live streaming. Um, so we'll be eating in the fellowship hall and then watching the movie, and I hope you can come and join us. It's a good time of fellowship. I want to also thank everybody uh, from Mission and Outreach uh, and uh, Mission Insight who helped uh, with our hot dog meal giveaway yesterday. We didn't have a lot of people come forward right here, but we ended up taking to them. Uh, we took to the towers, um, which was great. A gentleman came over and said, thank you so much for sharing the food with us. We greatly appreciated it. And then uh, we also had folks uh, take some uh, hot dog meals to the Mother's Ter Mother Teresa Haven Shelter in Wilkes-Barre. So that was a blessing. We enjoyed hot dogs. It was great fellowship. It was a beautiful day. Uh, and we're so thankful for everybody who came and grilled and worked and uh, baked and made all kinds of stuff to make it happen. Your donations are greatly appreciated. And we did reach people, so we're grateful for that. Also here, you'll see Father's Day is coming up. Don't forget pictures of those significant men in your life to put on our windowsills next week. And fellowship hour will continue as often as we have hosts to do it. Today, Parish Life is doing it as well as next week. Next week is Make Your Own Sunday. So... Come next week to celebrate that. Uh, we're collecting the non-perishable food items, so check that out. Uh, we have finished our Wednesday evening Bible study for the summer. We'll resume in the fall. Uh, Lunch Bunch will be meeting this Thursday. Uh, Cindy Kaczynski is going to lead that group uh, in my place. You can see other things going on. First Pres, as you know, is celebrating 250 years this year. They're having an Independence Day concert and program worship, uh, and I'm participating. Many musicians are participating. Our, some of our choir members are participating, uh, and we're really blessed to be a part of that. It's July 3rd, 7 to 9 p.m., First Pres, right across the bridge. Summer camp, that's an, also an opportunity and an adventure. Uh, some of the other things here, take a look at. And more announcements will be in the bulletin next week. Our Mission Insight meeting is Monday at 6 via Zoom. You'll see some other things. Mary's group is meeting on Tuesday. And uh, we are done our Bible study, so we will not be meeting on Wednesday. And you can see some other information there. I'll be out of the office Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And Rich Bradshaw will be uh, pa uh, covering for pastoral emergencies. He's the pastor at 44 at United Methodist. Any other announcements? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Well, thank you, Jack. We, that's the Wednesday morning prayer group that gets together at Ollie's. Anybody's welcome to come, and we, we eat together, we pray together, and we send encouraging notes to people in our church, outside our church, who are ill, um, also those celebrating birthdays from time to time, anniversaries. If we know it, we try to make a card out to those folks. So thank you, Jack. And now I'm going to uh, turn it over to Donna Dickinson. She's going to share our annual conference report this year. Good morning. How are we doing this morning? Good? Good to have everybody here. I have six pages. Oh, there we go. I wanted to grab your attention. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just doing some highlights, but I know what it, when, I, when anybody comes up, they say they have a report. Everybody starts to shut down. So I thought I'd try to wake everybody up this morning. But we held our conference um, in person. The only thing we did that was outside on a Zoom was both the clergy session and the lady session. And a uh, couple things about that lady session. Um, they had a program on the art of Christian hospitality, and there's some excellent techniques to welcome people into our congregation and also some barriers. Most importantly is to really listen uh, and encourage, be interested genuinely, um, keep preconceived notions at bay, and see Jesus' face in the face of each and other person. And I know Peg Knapp, she's, she's going to be sharing some things with uh, her ministry team uh, that you may see put in action in the fall. The other program was uh, with some four youth, which I found to be eye-opening and interesting. Uh, that was almost 50 minutes, which was great to hear from our youth. And uh, one of the things that they mentioned was one issue and challenge of the United Methodist Church is that we're stagnated. That's what they see. Um, we need to be more proactive. We need to love first, be accepting, show how we are serving the community as Christ would, and then to go and share the word of the gospel, not the other way around. So they said church can be boring. They said we also need to take a stand and take action on human rights, justice, and be inclusive. That's what Jesus taught. They wanted to, people to know that it is not political to be caring and loving one's neighbor. That is Christianity. And youth are the leaders of today, not tomorrow. Build authentic relationships. Don't try to be hip. And make sure your posts on Facebook and other social media are not corny or corporate. Show your church family in action. So that are the words from our, our youth. The conference that we had at Hershey was filled with uplifting and spirit-led music, respectful debate, small group table conversation, grace-filled moments, uh, times of prayer, and good news was we finished up early, and we could go home early. Um, Bishop Sandra Steiner Bell talked about uh, doing a new thing from Isaiah. That was the theme. She talked about an analogy of football, that we need to get into a receiving position. God will release the ball, you catch it, and the whole team will move forward. Take that step of faith, with Christ, we can move forward and join God where God already is at work, which is the future, not what was done in the past. So, there, you know, a couple, couple things. I am going to leave um, a full report available for folks. It will be in the conference, our annual conference booklet in um, September, October. I'll also see about putting some things up on maybe on the, on the website. Um, we had two churches closed in the scranton Wilkes-Barre district, um, and we had four churches in the Susquehanna Conference disaffiliate, so no longer being United Methodist churches. We also had um, a Bible study video 
with our second bishop, uh, Bishop Cynthia Moore Koikoi on Hebrews, because she was also doing her conference in Western Pennsylvania. Uh, those are the most of the highlights. We had seven resolutions, and um, one was on mental health, disability awareness Sunday. Uh, there was a resolution of God, of graceful departures, and um, it was to let people know about leaving the church and disaffiliating. There was a supporting human rights of Palestinian children and families, which did not pass. And um, there was one about unity and diversity and the gift of difference. That also did not pass because it had uh, a word about differing theologies, which caused quite a bit of debate. So it did, that, did not, that did not pass. Other than that, um, there will be less money that, ha that churches have to pay for their shares of ministry. So that is one good thing that I know our um, finance team will be thrilled about. So if you have any questions about any of the things uh, that went on at conference, please feel free to connect with me. But like I said, I will put a full report out. Take care. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you, Carl. After that beautiful prelude, would you please join me in the call to worship? O oh God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Your glory, O oh God, is above the heavens. We look at the universe that you have created, and we are in awe of what you have made for us to care for and enjoy. You have made us only a little lower than yourself, and you have entrusted your entire creation to us. And now for our prayer of invocation, we'll say it in unison. Holy triune God, all that is, all that was, and all that ever will be, belongs to you alone. You have spoken to us, your word made flesh, now guide us into the truth by the gift of your Holy Spirit, so that we may glorify you forever and ever. Amen. This morning's opening hymn of praise will be on page 64 in your hymnal. Holy, 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 verses 1, 3, and 4.
The Psalter reading this morning is from Psalm 8 with response number 1, number 743 in your hymnal. is your name in in all the earth. Your glory is chanted above the heavens by the mouth of babes and infants. You You have have set up a defense against your foes to to still the the enemy enemy and and the avenger. heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon moon and the stars which you have established. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, and And mortals that that you care care for them? them? Yet you have made them little less than God, and and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have have put put all all things things under under their feet, feet. all sheep and oxen, and and also also the beasts beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever Whatever passes passes along the paths paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how how majestic is your name in all the earth. now would everybody greet their neighbor and saying peace be with you. God's peace everyone. Peace Morning. everyone. Peace. Blessings. Peace. Blessings. Peace. God's peace. God's peace. Peace. Blessings. God peace. Peace be with you. Peace. lesson this morning is from Romans chapter 5 verses 1 through 5. Results of justification. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. And now the hymn of meditation, My Hope is Built, on page 368 in your hymnals.
kids today? We got one. We're going to leave Alex where he is. Anybody else? All right. You're all going to be kids today. <laughs> you can handle it. You're all going to be kids. So have any of you heard the word Trinity before? Okay. What does that word mean? Three and one. That's correct. Three and one. And what is the Trinity? Yeah. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So the Bible says there is one God and Father of all. But God is made up of three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, of course, that's what we celebrate today, the Trinity. And you've noticed we have sung, sung songs already that speak about that hope and that uh, three-in-one God that we have. Um, for some of us, the Trinity is kind of hard to understand, isn't it? You know, uh, it's a mystery to many of us. And it's something that we think about, we ponder about. Anybody have any examples of how you would explain the Trinity to somebody? What's an example of a three-in-one? One unit, three parts. Anything like that? How about the egg? Sister. Hmm? Child, mother, and sister. Child, mother, and sister. Okay. Maybe wife, mother, and grandmother. Same person, all of those roles. Maybe husband, father, grandfather. Same person, fitting in those roles. Any other ideas? How about this? You may not be able to see it. It's a sh shamrock. Yeah, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Notice it's one unit, three different parts. And then another example I thought about was the triangle. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Years ago, um, I used to think about the egg as a unit. You got the white, the yolk, and what's outside? Shell. Shell. So there are some examples like that. This is also another picture of what we might relate to the Trinity. This is a symbol of the Trinity. You know, they all interchanged. And um, there's also, I found also something else that might be better explain it. Here in this picture, you have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then, who's in the middle? God is. So, three parts of the Godhead there. So, if we were to look in some scriptures, it would also help us to remember that, you know, 2 Corinthians 6.8 says this, I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. John 10.30 says, I, am, I and, the and the Father are one. Jesus is God in human form. God sent the Holy Spirit to us after Jesus went back to heaven so that we could keep Jesus with us. The Holy Spirit is the very presence of God within all of us as believers. So what happened last Sunday? What was last Sunday? Pentecost. Pentecost, right? when the Holy Spirit came down and touched all those people. And what was born? The church. the church. So it's an exciting time of year. And Trinity Sunday always follows Pentecost Sunday. So it's an exciting time of year as we talk about the Holy Spirit, we talk about Jesus, we talk about God the Father. 
and realize that they are all one. But function, functions are a little bit different from time to time. Let us pray together. God, we thank you, Lord, for loving us. We thank you for the things in life that we don't completely understand and that you give us faith to believe them anyway. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, Donna is going to share with us a special music of meditation. Come, come, everybody worship. Thank you, Donna. I'm going to read uh, from John 16, verses 12 through 15. And the first sentence here, verse 12, just speaks about Trinity Sunday. It says, I have so much more to tell you, but it is too much for you to accept now. And the Trinity is kind of like that. It's not easy to understand or accept all the time. But the more we get to know the God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the more we see God as a unit. Hear these words. I have so much more to tell you, but it's too much for you to now accept. But when the Spirit of truth comes, he will lead you into all truth. He will not speak his own words. He will speak only what he hears and will tell you what will happen in the future. The Spirit of Truth will bring glory to me by telling you what he receives from me. All that the Father has is mine. That is why I said that the Spirit will tell you what he receives from me. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Today, as you know, is Trinity Sunday. And we always celebrate it that Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, 
This Sunday, we celebrate the three different ways we experience the one God. Today, we give thanks for Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer of our lives. For most of us, the doctrine of the Trinity is kind of difficult to explain to someone. Um, and it's not always easy to understand or comprehend. Some would say it's a mystery. But we serve this Trinitarian God, God that we love, obey, and seek guidance from on a regular basis. And I don't think we'll ever fully get a full grasp of the complexity of the Trinity in this life. I remember studying the Trinity in a systematic um, theology class back in seminary. The idea of systematic theology is to build a coherent understanding of the work of God. And it's, not, it's challenging to do that. Um, first, we have to keep in mind that we're not worshiping three gods here. We are worshiping one God that is threefold. The word Trinity is not found in the Bible. But we see evidence of the Trinity throughout the scriptures. And I just want to take a few moments to share with you some of those scriptures that speak to the Trinity. First, we have Matthew 3, verses 16 and 17. This is at Jesus' baptism. It says that Jesus came up out of the water, and at that moment he saw the Spirit of God descending on him, and a voice from heaven said, This is my Son whom I love. In the Great Commission in Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20, Jesus said, Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of who? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always. Mark 12, verse 29 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. John 1, 14, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And that famous benediction from 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, verse 14, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So what does all this mean for us this day? Well, number one, God exists in three persons. All are equal, all eternal. They are worthy of equal praise and worship. We also have an abundance of examples throughout the Bible of the different names for God. Shepherd, teacher, healer, wisdom, helper, mother, God, father, king, spirit. Those are just to name a few. We sing the Gloria Patre every week. You notice that? Every week we sing that. Take a look at the words we sing every week. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy, Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen and amen. The Presbyterian Mission Agency shared that legend has it that when St. Patrick told the King of Ireland about the Trinity, the King could not believe three persons in the Godhead could exist as one. Lifting up that sprague that I showed you of the shamrock, St. Patrick said these words, here is a perfect leaf with three perfect parts. Hence we have the shamrock as a symbol of the Trinity. 
Another symbol that I shared with you all was the triangle. And this one may be the first, the three equal sides forming one complete whole. These symbols capture some of what it means to be three in one. The Trinitarian nature of God, the triketra, this symbol was used in the spines of the New King James Version Bible. Um, and that was the last form I showed you there, the triketra. The three equal arches of the circle express the equality of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The union of the arches there represent the unity of the Godhead. Their continuous form symbolizes eternity. And the fact that they were interwoven represents the, the I, I guess you would say, that you can't separate it. You can't take it apart. They're interwoven together. It doesn't divide. Another part of our Christian tradition is the creeds. Two stand out from the early church, the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. They are written to express our faith in the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We share in the Apostles' Creed at communion, at baptism, at confirmation. You, we just shared in it last week. The Nicene Creed developed way back in 325 A.D., Anybody remember way back then? 325 A.D. And it took its final form in 381 A.D. There's a lot of detail in that creed. We're going to share it as we close out the sermon here today together to reaffirm our faith this morning. There's a lot of detail. And as one preacher put it, the essence of all three persons of the Godhead are the same and expressed through the Nicene Creed. So why talk about the Trinity? Why is it important to us as God's people? First, we have to keep in mind that the Trinity is God. All three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They're all the same, but different at the same time. Now, doesn't that sound confusing? They are all the same, but yet different at the same time. The Trinity is really at the basis of our Christian doctrine. The Holy Spirit opens our eyes and minds to who Jesus really is, reminds us that Jesus is both the Son of God and God himself in the flesh. That Holy Spirit brings spiritual truth to all of us as believers. The Holy Spirit is always with us. And the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin and changes our lives. In the doctrine of the Trinity, we find a model for community. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit work together to accomplish God's purpose for the world. As one commentator put it, God the Father creates, God the Son redeems, and God the Spirit equips. In the doctrine of the Trinity, we find our mission. Jesus said to his disciples, right there in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 21, As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Just as God the Father sent Jesus into the world, so Jesus now sends us into the world. That's what we're doing when we leave this place of worship every Sunday. We come here to be nourished and filled with God's Spirit in one form or another, and we go out these doors, and we're in the mission field. We're in ministry. So we have lots to do when we leave here every Sunday. So Jesus sends us out into the world, equipped and guided by the Holy Spirit. That's what enables us, the Holy Spirit, is what enables us to be in ministry out there in the world. It's easy to be here in worship. 
to participate in worship, to pray, to hear the word proclaimed, um, to open your Bible, to share in the creeds, to sing together. But when we leave this place, we go out into the world. That's not many times like us. Many we go out into the world to meet that haven't worshipped today, that aren't sure what you mean by the Bible, that don't know what it means to be in fellowship with one another, and they certainly don't know what it means to embrace the Trinity, to believe in the Trinity. So Jesus sends us out, but he doesn't send us out there alone. That third part equips us and guides us, the Holy Spirit. As we think about the Trinity this morning, let's remember those three persons of the Godhead are always at work in our lives, in the life of our church and in the life of the world. As we come to a close here this morning, I'm going to ask you to turn to number one or number 880. Turn to 880 in the hymnal. And we're going to affirm together the Nicene Creed. This is that historic creed that really speaks in detail of the essence, if you will, of the Trinity. And uh, we have been saying this creed for centuries. But like the Lord's Prayer, I think sometimes we don't really know what it says. We often say the Lord's Prayer, the Gloria Patre, Many churches like ours say it almost every week. But do we really know what the words say anymore, what they mean? So that's why I wanted to just share in this creed together. Think about what you're saying. Let us affirm our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. May we continue to celebrate our Trinitarian faith as God's people. We come now to sharing joys as well as concerns. One thing I forgot to mention during the announcements is that I have some more tickets here to a day at Montage Mountain Park, or the water park. Uh, it's on the 20, 22nd of June, and I have one ticket that takes two people, that two people can go on that, and then I have two separate one-person tickets. Anybody would like to have them, see me after worship, and we hope you'll enjoy that day. But you can only go on Wednesday, June 22nd, okay? Some uh, joys and concerns, one of which is Bible school that we're invited to over at First Pres. 
that's a wonderful ecumenical opportunity uh, for us to get involved. Um, I know there's birthdays. I know Teresa's birthday's tomorrow. Hallelujah. Right, Teresa? I know there's other birthdays around. I believe Steve Davenport has a birthday coming up. Um, there's also Pat and Terry Callahan. Their anniversary is coming up this week. So be in prayer for those folks. Think about them. If you have an old calendar for 2020, you know, with the pictures of our church in it, you know, birthdays and anniversaries are listed there. How nice it would be if we can remember each other's and send cards of congratulations. Um, we want to pray for uh, Emily Ballard. She is uh, from Dayton, Ohio. She's known by Aileen and Mike Case. And uh, she's very good friends of them. And uh, she is suffering with severe arthritis in her cervical vertebrae, in her vertebrae. So her neck is hurting. She's been to the ER several times. So let's keep Emily in our thoughts and prayers. Um, they have known each other for 17 or so years. We want to pray for Jane Walsack as well. She's having a procedure this week. Uh, continued prayers for our dear friend Pearl Gingell as she makes her way to heaven this week and for her children and her grandchildren during this difficult time. Keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Also, folks who are on the prayer list are on page three. Uh, please pray for these folks during the week. Uh, you'll notice a lot of shootings have happened in our area. Uh, you've heard on the news, be in prayer for these unsettled days. Also, for the family of Reverend Sherry Sh Shoss, um, she is good friends with Jim and Mary Maxwell. She a, was a colleague in the Upper New York Conference. Um, she is the one who performed um, Mary and Jim's daughter's funeral. So be in prayer for that family. And also, Tom Egan surgery was successful, so that's a blessing. He's home. Uh, we want to pray for Harry Haas. He has a torn Achilles. So surgery tomorrow, that's never fun. Uh, we want to pray, pray for Judy. This is Doris, Doris's sister-in-law. And keep her in your prayers. They're traveling to Connecticut this week to see her. Um, we want to pray for Sean Dickinson for Tess and Kelly Dickinson for COVID. Uh, we got some great news that Cindy Lieberman, uh, She's connected here to Gladys. Uh, she had an inter you may remember us talking about her insurance would not cover her chemo treatments that they wanted to give to her. Well, in an independent review, they overturned the insurance denials for the chemo, and now she doesn't have to put out the money to get those treatments. So that's a blessing. Um, no one should have to pay for chemo treatments out of their pocket. If they have insurance. Um, we want to pray for uh, Patty Sarniak. Um, she is not well. We want to keep her in our thoughts and prayers. Um, we want to pray for Marilyn O'Connor and Sue Whitmer. Sheila is having an operation on, thurs on Thursday. And um, others here on our prayer list may be also having procedures done, um, taking chemo or radiation. Uh, we want to continue to pray for those folks. Others who have health problems that you may know of, keep them in your thoughts and prayers this week. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and abundant God, we pause this morning. We've shared a lot of names, Lord. We have a lot of names, oh God, on our hearts, on our minds. Um, there's a lot of names on our prayer list here in the bulletin. We've shared names this week on the prayer chain. And Lord, you know these folks, their needs, before we even ask. And we thank you for the healing you've brought so many. And we pray for your continued healing and work in these folks' lives. We ask you, O oh God, to be with those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. 
milestones and graduations and all kinds of great things, weddings this summer. And we just pray, Lord, that you be with all who are traveling for vacations. And we lift up the chaos in our, in our world, right here in our neighborhood, shootings and fires and such unrest and concern. We pray that the needless violence stops, that there can truly be your peace in this world. We wish, we pray for it, and ask you, O oh God, to help people to think before they act, before they take someone's life needlessly. We lift up all the families of those children that have been lost recently, all across our country. There's been so many instances. We pray for answers, Lord, for direction. Help us, O oh God, to have a peace. Help people who are enraged, that lash out at others, to find an inner peace in you. Help us, Lord, to develop relationships, to help people realize they don't have to kill each other to be a winner. We pray, O oh Lord, for all those folks we've mentioned here today, the joys in healing, um, the joys when insurance companies come through and pay our bills. We lift up the high cost of medical expenses. It's overwhelming. We pray gas prices will go down soon. We pray legislation somehow will change these things. We pray for um, all those who are grieving, all those who are afraid and fearful to go to the store, to go to the school. None of our children should be afraid to go to school. None of us should be afraid to go in a supermarket or to walk on the street. We need help, Lord. Our whole world needs your help. And we call on you, our Trinitarian God, to help us through this mess. And we again thank you for the healing, the joys, the blessings of our lives. And now as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespass, or our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And may the Lord truly deliver us from evil in our world. We come now to sharing our gifts. Um, offering plates are on the windowsills and in the narthex. You can always send in your donations. We thank you for your tithes and your offerings that enable us to be Church of Christ Uniting and enable us to be the people you call us to be. And um, as Carl plays our offertory today, I just ask you to think about your giving and how God, ask God, where is he leading you to give uh, to help make a difference in our world this day?
Most gracious and loving God, we thank you for the opportunity to give. Thank you for using us to be your ministers in this community, in this church, and beyond. Fill us with your spirit. Enable us to be in mission. Help us to remember, Lord, that you go with us into the mission field. We don't go alone. Thank you, O oh God, and help us to be good stewards of all that we have. Amen. Standing on the Promises, verses 1 and 2, 3, 7, 4. Don't forget, we have coffee hour following worship today. Come join us in the fellowship hall. And then keep your hymnal open to 374. We're going to do verses 3 and 4 after the benediction. And in all of life, worship the Lord. Entrust yourself to God's mission in the world. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We, we go, go in peace, peace to love, love and serve the Lord. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to him eternally by love. I can. 